Well, we're on the inside. You know, I was thinking as we were coming in and listening to all the cheering and clapping and the bagpipes and how impressed I was, and I was never a direct part of World War II, and these guys and gals were. How much fun it's been for Calvin and I to cover the history of the Plattsburgh International Airport after after spending so much time supporting the mission of the former Plattsburgh Air Force Base. And now after only a few years, and in spite of all the people who said it couldn't be done, the Plattsburgh International Airport is tremendously successful. Okay, I'm trying to relocate here so I block as few people as possible. Uh, Nice crowd. Nice yeah, crowd. I don't like to be. You know, I don't like to be part of the show. We're here to record the show. <laughs> That's true. And I'm thinking Although back. we got to, pretty close in Albany the last time. I'll tell yeah, you that. Yeah, I was looking at that uh, News 10 guy out of Albany there who just kept running in front of people. And, I know. You know, it, it's nice to get the pictures, but uh, you know, it's it's also not about you. It's about the, what's happening here. And if you can do it and be as uh, inobtrusive as possible, I think it's a better idea. And I. Well, I kept that camera running. Uh, Colonel George is taking over here. He is. George King. Don't hang out there. <laughs> you can't see anything up there. Come on around. Go in here. <laughs> um, I thought it was important to, uh, we kept the camera rolling when we followed the veterans in here to get yes. not only the people who were being honored, but the people who took the time out of their day to be honor here. these people. Some people took a half a day off or a whole day off from work just to be here. Some people do work on Saturdays, you know. By the way, for people who are just turning their television sets on or pressing that uh, enter button or start button on the internet, it's uh, in the in the morning, actually, at about eight, fi almost eight fifteen on June eighth, twenty thirteen, the second North Country Honor Flight to Washington D.C. Honoring World War II veterans. If you don't know about Honor Flight, watch the rest of this program, and you'll get yourself a good education. Or look up the history of North Country Honor Flight or Honor Flight in general nationwide on the internet. It's so important that we honor these people who are a vital part of our nation's history involved in, uh, in uh, a, a war that lasted for a long time and was over in 1945 and these guys are, uh, we're losing them at the rate of hundreds every day. So it's great to pay as much tribute to them as we possibly can. It's also great to see the little ones here. They have a lectern set up, right? We, we only have one baggage claim here in Plattsburgh so far. <laughs> It's been expanded and will have to be expanded further, and I should mention that <laughs> no baggage will come no through. No baggage coming through while we're here. A few kids could, <laughs> could end up outside <laughs> if you press the button. You'll be on the conveyor belt. Yeah. All right, George is... He's the man. Yep. That's what Colonel's do. Really See? <laughs> hey, you're up. All the veterans began to twitch when he said it. He's... There's Danny Kafitz. community 
are grateful and we send them off. And we ask that you give them those safe journey mercies to and from once again. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Want your picture move it back. Stay on that side. Stay on that side, but just. Pass me on the left. Pass me on the left. Combat veterans, Association will now display a 48 star flag that has not been flown since World War II in honor of our veterans. Thank you. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. Pacific, etched in granite, 
and an honest light volunteer reaches out to shake your hand as so many will today and to thank you for your service to our nation. Something is going to happen at that moment that you never anticipated. Even if you watched the One Last Mission Honor Flight movie, if you've read the news stories or talked to our other Honor Flight veterans, this is going to be something you never expected. All the crowds, the flags waving, the hugs, the handshakes, the salutes, motorcycles and fire trucks, the tears and the joy, all of which is something I hope you never forget. But you know what? That is just the interest on the debt this country has owed you for 68 years. When you see your memorial for the first time, when you see it alongside those who fought as you did and shared the horror of war with you, the pride of serving, and earned the honor of victory you risked your lives for, at that moment, you are going to learn something when you see your memorial for the first time. A monument which will stand for centuries honoring your service and your sacrifice and your valor. And ensuring this nation will never forget what you did and what 404,810 of your fellow GIs gave their lives for. Now forever remembered by the 4,048 gold stars on the Freedom Hall, walk marked with the words, the price of freedom. You are then going to find out how our country feels about you. Possibly for the first time. <laughs> At that moment, I promise you, you will know that America loves you. Welcome to your honor flight. I hope this is one of the best days of your life. You've done your duty. Today we're doing ours.
participated in the Central Burma and Indian Burma, uh, Indian Burma uh, campaigns. Dorothy McClaire. Dorothy served as a nurse at the 1263rd Mason General Hospital. The hospital operated between 1944 and 1946. It was used for treating psychological casualties in the battlefield, as well as other related uses. During the hospital's pre-operation, the controversial documentary film, Let There Be Light, was shot there by famed uh, filmmaker John Houston. The film showed the steps that shell shock soldiers took in their rehabilitation to its normal life after discharge. However, the film was deemed so potentially controversial that the government kept it hidden from the public until 1981. Which just goes to prove to uh, that old Senator Feinstein, who we have had PTSD for longer than one before. Right. Brandon Brain, U.S. Army. Brandon served in the European Theater of Operations as a truck driver, lineman, and switchboard operator. Good signal mix, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> for the 16th Infantry and the 302nd Infantry, drove a deuce and a half all over, uh, over all types of roads and through all weather conditions. And he got to stay and join the occupation troops in, in, uh, for a while and, and uh, enjoy some of that German beer. <laughs> separated in uh, February 46, just one month before the Baxter was decommissioned in March of 1946. So they both got out at the same time. <laughs> U.S. Army. Tell type operator to handle one of those angry Kleinschmidt's. He 
was assigned to the 9th Troop Carrier Command in the mission of the 9th Troop Carrier Command was transported for Allied Airborne Divisions during the European Theater of Op Operations. So if you were airborne and made a combat jump, Poland probably was the one who sent you back to your orders. <laughs> <laughs> U.S. Army Air Corps. Bernie was, was a supply technician with the 1369 Air Force, Army Air Force Base Unit, another one of those. Except this one was stationed in Quailin and eventually Shanghai. As part of the Army Air Force Air Transport Command, or ATC, Bernie was regularly supporting the pilots flying over the hump into China. And although this has the studio across the last of over 800 men, their efforts kept China in the war. Bernie re enlisted in the regular army in Shanghai in October 1945. I was lucky enough to be in Shanghai in 1984. Big <laughs> 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 difference. <laughs> Ralph's, I'm sorry, Eileen Stockpiler.
Every morning I go out for a bike ride. And where I ride is down the hall. So I pass your monument every day. Sometimes at 6 o'clock in the morning, sometimes at 8 o'clock. What I observe is the fact that there are old ones. Some taking pictures, some dealing with writing, but there are always on So you should know that that kind of year is something that attracts all Americans in their wish to say thank you for what we did in the security team for X ray Street. From my perspective, my father was World War II veteran, died about six months ago. I did 24 missions over Germany, I did 24. When he died, I found something that I didn't know existed. He had a diary from the day he got on the ship going to Germany till the day they flew home. It wrote down each day's events, tersely and with very little emotion. I happened a few months before to ask him how he felt before each mission. His response to me was a little anxious. And I said, a little anxious? <coughs> He said, actually, scared stuff. This, from my perspective, demonstrates what I saw in the honor flight room. Each of the individuals who was interviewed had one very simple theme that they conveyed. I did my job. I just want to say thank you. Just like I have 
and I would remember that throughout, throughout my time overseas and continue to take a huge pride, not just in my service, but the history of the great things that our military has done. So late one night while I was overseas, I hatched this plan that I was going to take a trip to Europe with my friends in the military when we got back. In 10 months after I returned from Afghanistan, I found myself walking the D-Day beaches of northern France and visiting the Normandy American Cemetery and Memorial at Omaha Beach. As I walked through the exhibits, I was struck at how the efforts in Europe and throughout the world were Excuse me, the efforts of the U.S. and its allies were repeatedly credited with securing democracy in Europe and throughout the world for generations to come. I was in awe of the mission of those men and the manner in which they had executed it and the sheer volume of our nation's casualties. I remember thinking that the conflict that I had participated in was small by comparison. And about a year later, I returned to Europe on a class trip from the NATO school to the Dachau concentration camp. I saw a plaque on the wall near the main entrance with the rainbow of the 42nd Infantry Division. I recognized the rainbow because I had started my career as a pay clerk at the 42nd Infantry Division headquarters in Troy, New York. And I vaguely recalled a display in the hallways of the armory. But it wasn't until that moment that I had realized exactly what it had been about. And I was more horrified to think back and realize that for three years, I went to that armory and not once did I ever stop to look at that display. And I wonder how many Americans fall into that category some days of not really appreciating what you have done for our country and for the world. And I don't know that anything will ever make up for the pain and the loss and the trials and tribulations that come with military service. But for this today, it's just one teeny, tiny way that we as a nation can say thank you to you, our greatest generation. And I would like to close with a quote that stands at the entrance wall to the cemetery at Normandy from President Harry S. Truman. Our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifice. Thank you. Well, be 
you hate, but I gotta keep my eye on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I turn my back, he's gonna be on this plane too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the initial honor flight, the second man to sign up with the North Country Honor Flight for our very brief closing remarks. Very brief. <laughs> Robert O. Brooks, United States Navy. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, one more time for all our veterans here, and then we're going to get to the Thirteen, Plattsburgh International Airport, three minutes before nine in the morning. We've been around since early morning, and I have to say it's a little warmer than May 18th was. Oh my God, it was 34 degrees, if you remember, when we left down here. And thankfully, the rain has let up, so it was a wonderful morning. Tell me your names again. Harry Treadway. Harry and? Brian Trombley. And? Ron Dick. How are you guys? How many layers did you have on that morning? Um, not enough. <laughs> it's great. T tell me why you got involved with this. Well, one of the reasons that we got involved uh, was um, uh, because because of our association, we're all combat vets, and um, you know what what better way to honor our World War II vets than with uh, people that have been there. The other reason is, of course, our motorcycles. Uh, we we uh, give them a nice escort. Uh, we had a lot of motorcycles today. I tried to get the count, but we were too busy. But I know the last ride was 70. We were trying to count the decibels as you guys <laughs> took off. Yeah, yeah. It was more than 50, I promise you that. Oh, uh, yeah, I know. Well, we had the officers leading, so they weren't going to write oh, us a ticket. <laughs> It was, it was a good day so far. Oh, it's been awesome. Uh, you don't have to go all the way to Albany. This no, I, but it doesn't matter. We do it all again. I don't care what the temperature, you know. They deserve everything they can get. Yeah, I agree with you. Was it fun today for you? Oh, yes. The, the support that the community has given was great. It's fantastic. You know, it, it, I don't know about you, but when we got to Albany last time on May 18th, we were just blown away by the reception. Oh, it was it was massive. Like when we pulled in, I couldn't I couldn't believe the amount of people that were there. It was like you said, it was massive. It was heartfelt and overwhelming. We're so glad to be there with Calvin Castine and Hometown Cable. And you know what? Today was just terrific. Today was wonderful. You know, as, as Danny had said earlier, we were all concerned that we were going to get a, a a reasonable turnout here, but we had a great turnout. The community is so supportive and the motorcycle guys that that did ride in the rain early this morning to get here it's a wonderful thing well i woke up and looked out the window i was up about 4 30 just to make sure that it wasn't going to be too bad and it was just drizzling at that time and it stopped long enough for you guys to get over here and that's not a bad thing right oh, i spent the night in the computer looking at the rain <laughs> did you really? <laughs> you didn't get any sleep either did you well no, no, no. it's we're young, but we might have to take a nap later today. <laughs> what kind of bike do you have? Uh, I wear a Harley uh, Fat Boy. Do you? Yeah. Are you happy with it? I love it. That's a heavy bike. It's a good thing you're a big, strong guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, do you have any idea how much that bike weighs? 850 pounds. Yeah. You sound like you might have tipped it over once. <laughs> once. Did, that, did you lay it down once? Yeah. Well. You, you I want to be a friend when you lay down an 800 pound bike. Yeah. I want to blame it on the wife. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little she's bit of here to defend yeah, herself. She's over there. Oh, she is? A little bit of soft sand, and she got her butt wiggling back there. And she's got a ball peen hammer in her back pocket, so you better be careful. Yeah, yeah. that she does. You guys have been riding for a little. You've been riding forever and ever and ever. Forever and ever. My first motorcycle was in 1967. Um, I got out of the Army in uh, 1970. And um, I've always continued to ride. Have uh, 
tried to ride with a veterans organization of some sort. It's, a, it's, great. it's wonderful. Who do you guys know? Who owned the uh, the old bike with a sidecar um, with a marine in it? Yes, sir. Um, oh my goodness! Wasn't that a beautiful bike? Oh my God! What what year was it? Do you have any idea? Actually, I think it was a Russian bike. Uh, you are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. The light of everything we know. Yeah, that's a right. Russian bike. No yes, kidding. Yes, sir. I don't know if he restored it. I don't know. I didn't. I didn't get a chance yeah. to look, really look at it. It was sweet. I yeah. loved to watch it going by and coming yeah. coming in here today. Yeah. Well, that was a nice short ride over from uh, it was over Plattsburgh Air Force Base Oval. It was a great ride over, and everybody, you know, we got to thank the uh, Plattsburgh Police, the Sheriff Department, and of course the State Police. Everybody helped us out there. And the Fire Department, fire department with that, department with that with awesome. beautiful flag. Whole line security with Border Patrol. Yeah, everybody. Everybody, everybody was, was. It was fantastic. It was just so great to see everybody here today. I'm I'm a I'm a softy anyway, but when it comes to the military and watching this and knowing so many people involved in the in World War II, and to look at those faces and see them smile as they walked in here and yes. got that reception and the bagpipers. I know. Oh my goodness, how can you not be moved by the bagpipers? I know. Plus all the uh, 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 service people that are here in uniform, whether it be their work or dress. Um, that have participated is really excellent. It's very nice to see. You know, it's a it's a tribute to these guys from the North Country Honor Flight to get this organized. I mean, Calvin then drove in this morning. I drove in saying, "Okay, what are the logistics? Yeah. Where are you going to be? Where are we going to be?" And I can just picture those guys burning the midnight oil, oh, yeah. saying, "You go there. You go there. We'll hand this out because you know we're we're honoring these people, but we have to take care of them. So they're guardians." Who yes. pay their own way. That's correct. For these free flights down to Washington D.C. Wow. Not only do they pay their own way, they have to attend a training session. Oh, of course. So that uh, in case there's any life-threatening uh, issues, and just to get to know what they need to do with the gentlemen of those that, that age. So that's wonderful. It's very nice. You know. Yes. And one of the things I wanted to mention too is that the Combat Vets Association is all era vets. We have a World War II vet that rides with us. He still rides his motorcycle. Come on, I yeah. didn't know that. I think he was about 10 when he went in, but he's... Oh. Uh, and and we have the uh, several brand new Afghanistan vets that also ride with us. So we, we cover all eras. It's a great organization. How yeah. big? How big? Well, um, we're uh, nationally we're pushing a, uh, over 9,000, pretty close to 10,000 really? people. And um, locally we have 34 in the local chapter, which is from Ticonderoga to the Canadian border. Do you meet uh, once a month? Or? Uh, yes, sir. We yeah. meet uh, here in uh, up in at the DAV in Peru. Uh, one month, and then the following month, we utilize the uh, VFW in Ticonderoga. It's a good group. It I, is. I love to watch it. it. It adds so much to this whole thing. And okay. uh, I don't know if you'll ever live down May 18th. Free, <laughs> freezing to death, every part of your body. Yeah. Somebody told me they got off one of the bikes and their legs came out. They yes. couldn't even stand up. Their That's legs exactly were right. One of the riders there was so numb oh, goodness. that she couldn't stand. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it was too, you know. Thanks. It was cold. Thanks again, gentlemen, so much for thank everything you, you do. Thank Thanks you for, for being, being here. with us today. No, thank you for being here. See you later, guys. Thank you. thank you, sir. Have a great day. You too. Keep those motors going. Yeah. Looks like they brought on extra staff here to get all these. Oh, you would think so. It's very, very, very interesting. Go right ahead. You got to go by? Oh, okay. Just a second. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to us, but not be on camera. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, they're not used to this many people going through uh, TSA here at Plattsburgh. Uh, I understand there were some interesting times going through security in the Albany Airport when the guys were there, but they all got on their plane, they made their flights, spent the entire day being honored in uh, Baltimore and Washington, D.C., and then back home again very, very late at night. I was talking with Dave Mitchell, and uh, <coughs> they got home. Two o'clock in the morning, they went to bed. Dave got up at 5 a.m., woke her up to go downstairs and have a cup of coffee and read the mail <laughs> from the mail call. So, you know, they read it and they cried all over again. She said, I've never cried so much in my life. So those things are extremely important. I, I, I guess if you're to be very honest about it, every moment of our lives is history. 
but some things stand out more than others, either the good times or the bad times. And we've had so many good times here this year so far. Now, if by we're doing this on a on a Saturday on June 8th, and it's it's overcast, and if we get a little sunshine, <laughs> maybe something else to be happy about. But this is a great day as we watch the watch these uh, great bets going through the through the security to get on that plane down for Baltimore. And it is wonderful that they're able from now on to fly out of Plattsburgh. Yes, and uh, we should point that out for people. Uh, people will hopefully be watching this video long into the the future, but for those watching in 2013, uh, there are two more flights scheduled for the fall of this year, and they'll be leaving here. And you can see how important it was for people to be here today to, to give these guys a, a send-off they deserve. So we want people to start to marking their calendars and planning for the uh, September and October flights so that the, the veterans who go on those trips can get what they deserve here, Bender. You know, it, it, it brings back a flood of memories for me, having been brought up during the Second World War, uh, going to parades, going to veteran ceremonies, being in school when the, the various important aspects of the war were announced, listening to Walter Winchell and Gabriel Heater and all the people who were on the radio in those days on our, our little Philco radio on top of the refrigerator. Uh, paying attention to those things, those are the memories that stick in my mind. Well, yeah, and do a few fireside chats too. Huh? Oh, a few fireside chats. So, yeah, FDR, and I, I still tear up when I when I watch them, especially the infamy speech when Pearl Harbor was uh, was bombed, and then to have the opportunity late in my life to travel to Pearl Harbor and to stand there and to do a video for Hometown Cable uh, was. Um, Deeply moving and wonderful experience for me just to help remember. So Calvin is right. Put it on your calendar. Find out when the next flight is. Tell your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Get grandma and grandpa out there and, and get up early and meet them at the uh, Oval at the former Plattsburgh Air Force Base and or come right here to the Plattsburgh International Airport have, uh, off Route 22 south of town and uh, give these people the honor they deserve. It's great to have them here today. It's great to watch them as they go through TSA and plan to get on the plane. We have only one jetway here at the Plattsburgh International Airport as opposed to many other larger airports. I should mention that at this airport itself is a tribute to uh, the determination of so many people who believed that they could make it work. And it's only been in effect here for a few years and has been very successful. So it will be undergoing a major transformation and additions and growth in the coming years. And uh, we're, we're just so glad to see the difference between the former Clinton County Airport and the Plattsburgh International Airport. And once again, Calvin, Hometown Cable has been there to chronicle this adventure right from the very beginning, and that's uh, that's pretty nice too. Yeah, we were here when they broke ground, so to speak. Uh, they couldn't quite break the ground, but they were well, We were standing breaking. standing upstairs when this was just a frame, you know. Yeah, and when they were in construction, and then of course the a uh, couple of uh, opening ceremonies here. So uh, watching the first uh, plane fly out the window. <laughs> yeah, so. it didn't fly out the window. We no. were viewing it out the window. So it's pretty great stuff. And here we are again doing another major event called the North Country Honor Flight on, on June 8th. And they're still being cheered as they go through TSA. I don't, I don't think there's too much inspection going on. Just a lot of great honor. Well, they'll go through the, the metal yeah, detectors. Of course they will. Oh, he's letting them go along. They'll, they're letting them go on the side there, so I, I think these are these guys are safe to go. <laughs> I think so. They got the word. Yeah. They got the word. Well, you never know who you're going to run into in the parking lot at the Plattsburgh International Airport. How are you, Mitchells? I'm pretty good. I'm tired from the trip we took to Albany, but I'd do it again. You know, and you told me, and I told. Calvin on, and all the millions of people who watch this program that you got home at 2 o'clock in the morning and you got up at 5 That's and right. had a cup of coffee and started reading more letters from the mail call. 
The letters from the mail call were absolutely unbelievable. We Good. got 48 of them, and they're from some from Texas, and we had some from the kids was absolutely, well, the kids would draw pictures and do draw cats and a little bit of bad spelling, and then they'd say, I did it all. <laughs> I, I did it all. Is it, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. But isn't it? Well, I bet you never shed a tear, did you? We cried all morning. Well, how can you not? I cried just oh. hearing about it. Oh. When the little kids are involved, and that's oh. what they should be. Oh, no, 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 they should learn no. about this. The, the thing that amazed me the most was when I was sitting in my wheelchair in the Monument. monument this little gal came up, blonde, cute little thing, and she says, can I take my picture with you? And I looked at her and she says, you're only 13 years old. She says, no, I'm 18. So I said, where are you from? She says, I'm from Serenat. And I said, what are you doing here? She said, I'm with the Freedom Club. Is it that I said, you're in the right place. I said, it starts right with you kids. I meant kids. I'm older than them, so. <laughs> but there was a boy with a older. Let me see that. I'm not going to let you cover your face again. There, there was a boy, 19 years old, that was with her, and I told him. I said, you know, I said when I was 19, I said I'd already spent a year and a half in the combat, and I said when we, when you grow up, I hope you don't have to do the same thing. He said, what can I do? I said, you know what you can do. You go right and vote and start right at the top yep. and see what you can do. Well, you, you know, you hoped when you came home that the world would be a safer place. And it was for a while. Then it wasn't for a while. Then it was for a while. I guess it'll be up and down like that as long as we live. It cannot continue that way or else we'll be absolutely dead. This it's, country will be dead if we don't have honesty. It's pretty scary. I was reflecting when we were in there and I watching all you wonderful heroes. Uh, you know, I was just a little boy because I wasn't born until 1937, but I lived through that. And the war had a whole different feeling for me, the way it was presented in the newspapers, on the radio, mm -hmm. no television yet. But it was such a, it's such a thing for a young kid to know a veteran. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. When I was a little tiny boy, there were still Civil War veterans marching in parades, and, and they were, <laughs> they were almost 100 years old by that time. That's right. So here we are in 2013, and I bet you never dreamed that this, that there would be such a thing as this North Country on No, Light. no. I, uh, I when I got out of the military. I got my uniform presented with the things on it. I hadn't worn that jacket in three years. And when I got home, I worked for three or four days and put it away and never opened it up till just a few years, two or three years ago. Come on, you opened it up? The, it moth, had, the moth didn't get to it? No, it was packed away. Oh, and boy. It looks like brand new today. Oh. And I took it out mostly to leave things for my daughter to see and follow up it's because her father died. And well, didn't well, talk about World War One enough, and we lost that part of our well, life. We've talked about Dave. We've talked about that so many times. So many horrible things happened to people that they they internalized it. You know, mm -hmm. they got this thing called PTSD, right? We called it a little different things back then. World War One, we called it shell shocked, yeah. battle fatigue. We had different names for it over the years. But, I mean, you know, and I know, and you know far better than I, because I never served, uh, that whatever you do in a service, it stays with you forever and oh ever God. and ever. And the memories, it's not like it's 60-some years ago, is it? It's like it happened last Tuesday. You know who needs a lot of credit? Danny. If it wasn't for Danny Kafix, we would have never known anything like this. My daughter and my wife called and asked how to be on, your first be on the first flight. I had no idea that we were doing this. Really? No. And when that, I've been following with Danny and his drive, he's dedicated to this. Beyond what most people yes, can even yes, realize. Yes. I mean, he is, <laughs> when he gets his nose headed in one direction, you can't pull him to one side. Yeah, and no. I'm very surprised that he wasn't going on this next flight because he deserved to be there. Yeah. Well, he started, I read the history of it online this morning. I had read it before and I forgot. But our friend Joe St. Dennis from Katyville was a guy that Danny was asked to pick up and take him down for the, the leather stocking. 
Mm -hmm. flight way back mm -hmm. when and Calvin and I did a story with him on television some years ago at his daughter's house there in Katyville and that's how it started for him and he just this is dedication beyond belief yeah. to, to be this short into the program and to have this many people show oh. up today and oh. have everything go off Albany yeah. were you surprised the people down there surprised I, I didn't know. I thought the president was there or something, didn't you? When yeah. we drove up and saw and heard that army band and oh. all these bagpipers here today. Wow. Those motorcycle so ride done. was something you'll never well, see we again. We just interviewed a couple of those guys, those combat veterans. I mean, 36 degrees, 38, 39 degrees, just frozen to wet death. Too, and, really. and wet and <laughs> proud to carry the flags all the way to Albany. That was quite a bus okay. ride, wasn't it? I told him from now on that's the way I'm going to Albany. <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> An escort. But you know, we, I, as I said to Calvin a few minutes ago before you came out, we make memories every day of our lives, don't we? Mm -hmm. We make memories. But these are the memories that you can, how can you ever forget this? No, I can't. This, this kind of honor today. What, what I certainly can't forget are those students from Saranac. Yeah. <laughs> Something. Well, congratulations to them and to all the schools who spend a little time talking about the, the sacrifice that you guys made way back in the Can you days. get that poster they made with the signatures of all those I guys, was, a I photograph wonder, of that? I wonder where it is. It would be up in the Saranac school. school. Well, we I would assume. Yeah. We could call them and find out. We were just out. talking about yeah. to, to so, the but teacher. teacher. Well, we're maybe see on Thursday. Well, well, if we'll you see him, out. tell him. Maybe somebody can bring. How big is it? It's is not it, that big. It's probably uh, five by five. Or, or let him bring it to the next flight. Calvin and I, oh, Lord yeah. willing, if the creek doesn't rise, the hometown cable cameras will be there, and we'll get a good shot of it. You know what I suggested the students do? To, when the people road. sign this, can do the, like <laughs> sign my name, sign the. Uh, the organization you're with, Air Force, or yeah. because you just got a signature on there. Yep. By Air Force or yeah. Marines, whatever, you cover the whole country, yeah. the whole war, not yeah. just one spot. I know. Well, you you did your duty, David, and here you are still doing it by showing it up each time. I know you had the experience of a lifetime in Washington. Yeah. What did you did you did you have any special feelings when you walked up to that monument? In tears. How can you not? Yeah. Did you see any names on there that were familiar? There are no names. There's no names on it? No names on the monument at all. Oh, I thought there All you there. have in the monument is, this is interesting, you've got South Pacific, you've got uh, European, yeah. and uh, um, the one that, uh, where the D-Day. Yeah, and Normandy, France. Normandy. Well, those... Uh, are in different sections uh. and the names of the battles and the things are there well i spent so much time before we got to our own and they said you had 20 minutes left oh come on and we, to had, hurry in your we had all the places where i had served and i had sat with my wheelchair and uh, i'll bet there was 50 people came up that had their daughters or their wives or their grandfathers, they wanted to know about it because they served in Guadalcanal, they yeah. served here. How can, we could just, hardly take pictures. Oh, and we just and we just celebrated, commemorated D-Day mm -hmm. just a couple of days ago. Huh? Here yep. we are on the 8th, and that was June 6th, right? Yep. D-Day? Wow. Well, you know, when we went, we're in, when they dropped the bombs on August 5th, yeah. 6th, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, our squadron was loaded for invasion of Japan. Oh, I know, you were ready to go. We were ready to go, we went anyhow. And we were there about probably 10 days or no more than two weeks after they had dropped the bombs and we saw Kobe and, and, Nagas and, Kobe and Osaka almost 30, 40% bombed out. Tokyo was like 40%. They lost uh, I think 85 or 90,000 people in one bombing raid. Isn't that a They lost amazing. 150 in the, two th in the two Nagasaki and yeah. Hiroshima bombed 250,000 people. I know. It's, it's hard and to believe. Like this. Just like that. We're going to 
hope we can get to those, uh, some of those idiots free with some oh, of their boy. hands. Oh boy, that's it's scary. Yeah, it's scary for all of us. I'm not going to make you stand here any longer. Oh. I, I told you a couple of minutes, and you've been here for ten because well, uh, you're such a good friend, Dave. Uh, the, uh, again, let us, at hometown cable, Calvin and, and I, and all, all the people in the North Country, thank you for your, what you did for all of us. We'd like to see the tapes, and we haven't seen them yet. Danny we, said we'll they're going to be available. Them. They're, they're available on the internet. They're on television on Channel 15 right here in Plattsburgh this weekend 12 times. I watched them a couple of times yesterday just to make sure that everybody smiled. You guys have a fantastic day. When you see her picture, have a that thing in the front. I, I love it. Right, right over her head. Oh. See you later, Dave. You know, I, I want to. I, I almost hate to go home today because I'm on such a high after watching this program. You know, we do our best. See you guys. Wave that, wave that flag. I want to thank uh, all the people who support Hometown Cable. I want to thank Calvin for doing it for. 30 years and one day, I want to thank all of your contributions, all your suggestions and comments. Most important, if you're a business and you can afford to write out a, a check to Calvin to keep this program going into the future, please do that. If you're an individual, you like what we do and you want to see more, please write that check and send it to Calvin Castine, care of uh, our little corner hometown cable on the Ridge Road in Champlain. And who knows where we're going to be next.